All right, hello again and welcome to another episode of the Fun Fans Podcast. I'm your host, James Diller. With me as always, my co-host, Bailey Jackson. How you doing, B? I'm good. Glad to be here. Another hey, Sunday you, night. Yeah, another Sunday night. Hey, as you can see, we've got a special guest with us, softball pitcher Brooke McCubbin. We're going to talk some golf, a little bit of pro golf, and some Fun fan style golfing. We're going to give a quick short update on college baseball, and there's some NIL drama going on so we're going to talk about that some hot topics and we're going to give away some merch but first of all the fun fans are a proud part of the fanboys fangirls sports podcasting network if you're a true sports fan the fanboys fangirls is perfect for you find various nationwide podcasts and other sports media at thefanboys.com and all forms of social media the fun fans podcast is the official podcast for clemson fans and bailey was our official Place to dine. Ruben's Food, Sports, Spirits, and Catering, the best wings around with two locations in the upstate, 1083 Batesville Road in Greer, South Carolina. I went right by there the other day. And 11028 Anderson Road in Piedmont. You can find them at rubensc.com. It's a great place to eat for all sports fans, especially Tiger fans. Tiger fans. I don't know why we make, make questions, Brooke, because the first question should definitely be, if you haven't been to Ruben's, we won't ask. But if you hadn't been, you got to go. It's it's really really good. We were just the Dillards were just there again last night. Go figure. Uh, hit that place twice this week. But anyway, we have Clemson. Do they have like a, a, a discount card if you go there so much? I, they should. You should get one. I should get one. Right. Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's, that's fine. Hey, it's it's all about we're promoting Rubens. It's it's really good for real. Uh, all right, but today, without further ado, we're going to introduce our guest, Clemson softball pitcher. She appeared in 23 games, started seven, finished with a 1.34 ERA through 73.1 innings. I won't get into the how they came up with .1. Is that one-third, really? That's one out. Of yeah, an, one out on the inning. So I'm a math. I'm a former math teacher. To me, they, so they should have put the one So .3 is 100%. Yeah, anyway, 39 strikeouts. She held a five-and-one record. On the year with two saves. She also had one at bat. We're going to talk about that from Locust Grove, Georgia, Miss Brooke McCubbin. Brooke, how are you doing this evening? I'm great. How are y'all? Doing good. Doing good. Now, once again, a little bit off script already. We talked a little bit about your hometown. It's kind of with a name like Locust Grove. I told you I did a little research. As soon as I saw that name, there's got to be tons of outdoor athletes come from a place like that. I mean, I people aren't scared to get their fingernails dirty and stuff from a place called locust grove right <laughs> yes sir we have a lot of a lot of people i went to school with that are really good ball players very good no surprise it should be a whale a whale for the tigers just dip the pail <laughs> in the locust grove and bring them out of there so anyway one other thing about the bio they threw in that you had won at bat but didn't give the outcome would you mind telling us what happened with your one at bat I'm pretty sure I probably struck out. Well, um, it, if you're not sure, you, it was a hit. Yeah, or a home run. I can't quite remember. <laughs> um, but I I don't really get to hit all that often. It's kind of like, a, hey, Brooke, Brooke goes in there. Like, let's just see what happens. See what happens. In the fall, I got thrown in there, and, and I hit a home run, and then I hadn't been able to hit a ball since. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I thought it was interesting. They kind of threw that in there had one one at bat but those are the pitching stats are definitely very impressive for the tigers this year so so brooke you're from georgia and how where is locust grove so if you're thinking about clemson clemson's here atlanta's like here and then locust grove's like right here i live like 45 minutes south of atlanta all right. So I live in like middle Georgia. We got it up on the map right now. So that's just south of Athens, Georgia, too. So tell us how you ended up at Clemson versus somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so I just really liked Clemson. I like their facilities. I like the town. I really like the coaches. Growing up, like, as a Georgia fan, it was kind of like, when you're little, you're like, oh, I want to go to Georgia. But then when you're actually in the recruiting process, it's a lot different, and you're actually looking for different things. 
Athens is about an hour, hour and a half from my house. So Clemson is like Athens is the halfway point to Clemson. And I just like the distance Clemson was. And I was just, I like the town because it's a much smaller town. And Athens is kind of scary sometimes. <laughs> so I felt like I, I was I agree. in Clemson. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of barking going on in Athens from, from our experience. So. Yeah. That is still the that is really cool what they do when they kick it off though and they bark it. it I have to give them credit for that. Yeah, it is definitely we, it is it noted cool. on our podcast that it is hated by uh, the opponents, but it is we understandably a very very cool tradition stuff yeah, that cool. they have there at Georgia, and they've had some some definitely some things to bark about, especially when it comes to football. <laughs> Here lately, recently. Yeah. Yes, sir. So speaking of your student experience, what year are you now and, and what is your major? So I'm a rising junior, so I will be in my third year this year. I'm majoring in parks, recreation, and tourism management, but I'm emphasizing in sports management. And I'm hoping to be like a director of operations for a sports team, maybe in the collegiate or pro level. Or an awesome. athletic director like Bailey. That's yeah, great. Or I, could, I could do that too. Yeah. I could do a lot of stuff with it. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully my hey. parents are watching this and believe me because they think yeah. I can't do anything with it. You can do whatever oh, you want Oh, yes, do. you can. <laughs> Tell them I have, I have a master's in sports management, which we've discussed before, but yes, that year's plenty of things you can do with it, so <laughs> go get them. Yeah, go yeah. get them. I need, right, I so need you, to tell my mom that. <laughs> well, I will. Hopefully mom's listening. Um, <laughs> you guys had a great season, all right, and – um from your perspective, what was it like and, and, and where are you headed, I guess, is a good question, too. So as a new program, just playing like one of the top teams and like competing with them was like a really eye opening thing because we had gone through kind of a, a rut. We started off on a really high note and then mm -hmm. it kind of slowly just went into a rut. And then we, I thought we ended on a high note, even though we lost. But it was just kind of eye-opening and gave us some more confidence because a team that has been dominating college softball longer than you've even been a team is very, like, I guess threatening. Like, you you just don't know, like, how you're going to do. But I thought this year went really well, and I think we're only going to get better from this year and this experience playing Oklahoma and the Super Regional. Yeah, and that looked like a heck of a place to play too. You know, it was, uh, it looked like it was all Oklahoma except for one little section of Clemson fans. Um, yeah, and it was just our parents. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's. Um, and you were down to like two strikes with two outs twice, uh, from yeah. ending their win streak. But so yeah, yeah it was good. Know. I would agree yeah. with you. Definitely. When I mean, you know, definitely have measured against the measuring stick. And as far as I'm concerned, anybody else really, it, it's all, it was a little bit here or there and could have pulled away a win. And when you pull away one win, who knows what could happen. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, the program's right there. You guys just keep working, whatever you've been doing. And yeah. uh, I'm sure it'll, it'll happen. But is there, a, is there a, among that super great season you guys had very successful, there are ups and downs, like you said, is there a moment that stands out? Was there a, a favorite moment, a coolest moment, or something I know you realize right then that I'll never forget this moment kind of moment? So we were, I think we were playing Furman. I uh, can't really remember off the top of my head. It was a midweek, and I got to start, and I had a perfect game going into the fifth, and then I had a no-hitter going until the last, like, the last inning, and I – with that last batter, I think I had two strikes on her, and then she hits the ball up the middle and ruins a no hitter. And like when they took me out, because I wasn't going to even pitch the whole game, but I had a good game going, so they let me stay in. And then I got out, and everybody gave me like a standing ovation. All my teammates were like giving me hugs, like even though I didn't even do it, it was just like such a cool moment for to see how happy they were to see me su succeed. And I was even talking to Aaliyah, our shortstop, after the game. She was like, yeah, if a ball came to me and we didn't think we were going to get it, we were just going to throw it crazy so it would go down as an error, not a hit. <laughs> <laughs> and so it Teamwork. was just like 
yeah, it was just nice to think that my teammates had my back. That's, that's, a lot goes that's on. what teammates are for. That's right. Yeah. There's a lot goes on when you're out there playing in a lot of sports, but uh, athletes, some people, if, if they've never played, especially don't realize what all go, goes through folks' minds. And it's hard to focus on, you know, what you need to do when you something like that gets going. And that's really – it's harder than you think probably uh, to even get close to a perfect game or a, a no-hitter for sure. That's why it's a big deal when it actually happens. Cool. Yeah. So who's who would be uh, now? I don't want you to make anybody mad, but who would be your favorite teammate? If you had, let's say, you can tell us more than one. To be fair, sure. Um, I I like everybody on my team, but I would say the closest people I'm with, not my favorite, but the right. people I'm yeah. close with. That's a better with, way to phrase it. That's a better yeah. way. To it. Um, would have to be Jaden Rosowski, um, number twenty one. Haley Whiteside's number eleven, um, and probably Mac. <laughs> Mac, I'm we're me and him are pretty close. Um, I'm trying to think, like every like I feel like I'm friends with everybody, but I would say like Jaden, like if something happened, like I'd be like oh, Jaden, like guess what happened, like kind of thing. Um, so I I would say those are probably like my closest friends, but I I'm good friends with everybody on the team very good yes that's a perfect segue into the into the next question we for those of you that missed last week's show mac is not a player and his last name is dog but we've established that it's, it's mac mac dog. McLaughlin. Mac okay McLaughlin. mac mac very simple he's from seattle he's the manager yep. for the softball he's team. the team manager the number one hype softball guy ever right mac dog and, on tiktok yeah, and we're going to – I don't – this isn't really talking about him, I don't think, whatever, but this is we're just a legit question. He seemed like a really, really good guy to to me and Bailey. Like I say, we're high school administrators and whatnot, and we, we like to see the, the future of America, and we get in uh, – want to help kids all we can. And But since you know him, was is he really as good a guy as he seemed to us or – <laughs> he, I think he was just putting on. Oh, he is okay. He's, a good he's so he's so sweet and kind and genuine. He so my birthday is one day before his, and we were like, we're not getting each other birthday presents. We're not going to do it because like it's fine. Like we're not going to get each other birthday presents. And he went out and got me a birthday present, even though we said we weren't going to do it. And then on Valentine's Day. All the girl coaches, all the girl managers, all of us. He bought all of us roses and wrote all of us a like handwritten note saying like, "Happy Valentine's Day! I'm so happy I met you!" Like that kind of thing, and like saying like things that he loves about us. And it's like just so sweet. Like who does that? Like I don't know. It's just so sweet. Mac, don't. maybe I do. I don't maybe know. I maybe, don't. maybe. Who? I don't know. But we were all like, oh, we were like, oh. Mac. Yeah, Mac. Mac seems like a good guy. Good job, yeah. Mac. <laughs> I roll. We, all the other guys all, are eye roll emoji. If a girl so, broke his heart, we are all like, oh, after. Yeah. 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 Keep the bats away from you guys if that happens. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're very busy with softball and, and everything going on, but do you go to other sporting events at Clemson? Um, I really like to go to baseball games. Uh, I love watching baseball. Um, I want to make it out to a basketball game. I'm just so tired, <laughs> like, all the time. Like, I just haven't gone. Um, I've been to a few women's and men's soccer games. I love those. I don't even like soccer, but I love going to the games. I can't watch it on TV. I have to be there. Um, I really – I used to play lacrosse in high school, so I really want to make it out to um, some of our lacrosse games. It's just kind of hard because we're in the same season as them. Right. But, yeah. Cool. Very good. Yeah, I saw – I don't know if you were with them, but we asked this question of uh, even the former players, and we've gotten some interesting answers because they talk about how they really couldn't because they were too recognizable kind of thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of times because of their size, whether they're basketball, football. We sat behind P.J. Hall and a couple of the basketball players at the first baseball game in the series mm -hmm. of the regional. And nobody was really hounding them or anything, but they didn't stay long. But, of course, there's pictures of them posted all, hey, look who was here and whatnot. But mm -hmm. my daughter and I was at the girls' basketball game, playoff game. 
And mm-hmm. you guys walked in. Once again, I don't know if you were with them, but it was, you know, you could tell it was the softball team. People recognized whoever it was. And, but y'all sat way over away from everybody and, uh, and kind of stay, I guess, was staying away from the crowd, but looked like just come from practice or something. So you guys are always busy. And, uh, yeah, just got to do, but try to enjoy stuff a little bit, but it's good. You made a nice list of pretty much all the rest of the sports, uh, except mm-hmm. football. Do you know, do you go oh, to I, football games? Of course, games? I go to football games. Okay. okay. Sorry. It's a <laughs> that's, no brainer. That's, that's a given, though. That's a given. We're in section C. Is that right, Bailey? Yeah, we're in the C section. That's what we say. So we so we can remember where we sit. So anyway, look for the fun fans in section C. All right. So everybody has seen the video. Speaking of Oklahoma, of those Oklahoma players, given it was after they won again, it's that third time in a row, right? For Oklahoma softball, and it was all four. I'm pretty sure it was four players, and they were giving all the credit to Christ and their faith. When I looked you up on Instagram, once again, more research, the first thing I saw was a Bible verse, uh, Romans 12, too. How do you think, as an athlete, how do you think faith plays a role in the life of an athlete? So being an athlete is a lot of – it takes a toll on you mentally, physically. And to me, I feel like the only way to feel full is, like, through Christ and through God – and Romans 12, I have it pulled up right here to so I could say, it. do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. So I just like like to think about that because some people, including myself, get so caught up in worldly things of like, I got to go to work. I got to do this. I got to do that. And they don't take time out of their day to worship God or be in God's word. And so just that verse just helps me, like, think about, like, center myself and know that I'm on this earth for a reason. It's to spread God's word. And I love that the Oklahoma team does that because God wants us to use our talents to serve him. And I think using your talents as like of softball as a way to spread his word is an amazing thing. I always use like, I will always post on my Instagram story, like Bible verses and things like that, just because I know I have little girls following me and like the next generation of softball players. And I just like really want to use like the talents that God give God gave me to be able to spread his word and his will with other people. Very good. My awesome. my preacher is from Oklahoma. He's a big Sooners fan. So if he's watching, Danny, I know you were proud of the team, uh, pr- more proud of what those girls said than the team winning probably. But that's a – yeah, keep it. that You got to have something because, like you said, life is uh, testing. It can be okay. difficult at times, and especially the pressure uh, being, a, being an athlete on such a high level. Mm-hmm. I mean – that's such a high level of athletic competition. Once again, we talk to athletes all the time, and I know the a lot of high school kids. I they didn't they didn't realize how good they were. They were they were just good, and I think sometimes uh, I think it was Grayson Marshall may have been somebody we interviewed that said he didn't really realize on what kind of level he was. He was just playing, right? But uh, it can be a lot of pressure. So anyway, very good. That's good to hear. Hopefully, my daughters are listening. <laughs> Yeah, so to change subjects a little bit, we saw that um, you, you're back in Clemson or you're offering some camps and some lessons and things like that. Is that right? Yes, sir. So I'm actually not in Clemson right now. I'm back in my hometown, but I will be doing lessons and um, I've been helping out with practices for teams. I'm going to be putting on a pitching camp with my uh, pitching coach from back at home. Um, and I'll get be getting lessons at her facility in Warner Robins, Georgia. And um, so I'll be doing that, but I, I'll be back and forth. But mostly I'll be in Warner Robins getting lessons, mentoring if people want to, just all kinds of stuff, just doing softball the whole summer. And they can find that information on your social media, I'm assuming? Uh, yes, sir. All my most recent post um, is a uh, like a picture it will be like of me pitching and then it has like a whole thing talking about what I will be doing and the account for the facility. And then you can either message me 
or that account to like set up something with either of us. Well, cool. Very good. Very good. We appreciate that. And if, if there's any specific links you'd mm-hmm. like for us to post with this show, you can email those to me, but we'll definitely direct folks to your social media so they can get that information. If they're anywhere near those areas, it's probably worth the drive to get some instruction and mentoring from Brooke Clemson's one of Clemson's standout pitchers. So, uh, but we appreciate you being on here and we wish you the best of luck this summer and next season for sure. Thank y'all so much for having me. I really Yeah, good luck. Go get them. Go Tigers. (laughs) That's right. Thank Thank you and go Tigers. Thanks, Brooke. All right. She's great too. Oh, yeah. What's up with all the uh, the, the kids? High quality individuals in Tiger Town, let me tell you. (laughs) Somebody's doing a great job recruiting. I I don't, and not to take, it's definitely credit to all the coaches. They, they're, you know, Dabo got that reputation of. We recruit character we recruit yeah and that's that's apparently uh program wide not just with football for sure so that's correct yep so anyway all right transition speaking of being in clemson don't forget about wayne buckingham's fundraiser tim beret has said this will be a historic event because this will be the first time these guys have been in one place at one time we're talking horace grant dale davis levon kirkland michael dean perry coach danny ford the list goes on reach out to us for more details uh, find the information that's on this graphic on the screen, the WAB alumni fundraising orange and white weekend. Once again, that'll be included in the links that we post when we post the links. And also a reminder that not only are, are we on all forms of social media and our shows are posted on YouTube, but we are also channel 24 on WSBN TV, download the Boxcast app and you can just watch us on TV, just like ESPN or CBS or any of that kind of stuff, Any right? Of your favorite networks. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have my true victory shirt on, but everybody sees that ticking across the bottom. So Bailey, we want to do a, just a quick update on baseball, even though Clemson's out, we're, we're, we're good sports coverage ish people, right? The, yes. Is there at least one game we want to point out? All right. So Florida swept the Gamecocks this weekend. Um, all right, that concludes and, the fun fan coverage of the no, <laughs> and punched their ticket to Omaha, Nebraska, and two ACC schools actually did as well. Wake Forest uh, swept Alabama, beat them five to four in game one, and then twenty two to five. So <laughs> they must have went like for two after the Al- third touchdown. Alabama laid down, and then Virginia actually beat another ACC school, Duke, after losing the first game, beat them two times in a row to advance. So there are two ACC schools in Florida that have nailed down a spot in Omaha, and I'm looking quickly. Um, LSU's up 1-0 in their series. They're in the bottom of the six. is 5-3 LSU over Kentucky. Oral Roberts is up 5-4 in the top of the seventh at Oregon. That is the championship game of that Super Regional. Yep. And – Southern Miss and Tennessee are tied one to one in their super regional. And then Stanford and Texas play game two tonight at 9 p.m. Texas holds a 1 0 lead. And that's so the deciding game. Tennessee's uh, game tonight is the, the deciding game for them. No, it's then, I, don't, I don't think it's tonight, is it? That Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then the last one you mentioned, they, they've only gotten one game in. There must have been some weather or something, but so they're, they're a little bit behind. I think Tennessee Southern Miss play tomorrow. They, okay. they played today already. Um, and then other games tomorrow could be, if necessary, LSU, Kentucky, and if necessary, Texas and Stanford. So, Well, uh, speaking by- of LSU, and since this is the Fun Fans podcast, I saw, uh, to me, the important highlights was lots of tailgating going on down there in the bayou. So props to the LSU baseball fans. Uh, for getting it done outside of outside of the stadium. In other college sports news, name, image, and likeness is back in the spotlight. Here's a quote from NCAA president Charlie Baker. He said he wants a federal law to regulate the way college athletes can be compensated for endorsement deals that creates a registry of deals, agent certification, and uniform contract standards. The quote is, I think it was a big mistake by the NCAA not to do a framework around NIL when they had the opportunity to. 
Charlie, a Charlie Anna. Baker, I said this months ago on this program. I, I mean, I, I, I hate to say this, but anybody that would really think that anybody, and I'm, I don't mean this in a bad way, especially for the kids. I'm talking about the other people. It's documented. Go back and listen to our podcast when all we talked about was NIL for an hour. The people that were going to make money besides the kids were the ones that were like, just do it. Just do it. They need the kids. They should get the money. Blah, 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 blah. Every other adult in the world knew that there should be some thought process go into this thing. And now we said this back in January, they're going to have to try to back up and punt. But yeah, so that I, definitely. I said, said that if the Nick Sabans and the Dabos and those people in this world got involved, that there would be some serious um, changes made. The problem is you it's it's a state versus federal issue. Okay, I'm a so, old social studies teacher. There right? you go. All state states are making different laws about how to how to handle this. So most of the schools that are benefiting from this are state universities. Yep. So there has to be some federal regulation on how this is handled to make it all uniform. Because if you don't, and then at the same time, nobody knows what anybody's getting. There's no right. transparency. Correct. Um, so that ought to be, if, if you play at a state school, that ought to be public knowledge. Just if like you or just I, like our salaries, our salaries can be looked yep. up online right now because That's we right. work for the state of South Carolina. All right. We know right, this so, is going to get out of hand. Now, I'm gonna, you continue, and then I'm going to go on another rant. All right. So, and like Bailey's saying, the thing is, whether people want to rein it in or not, the, the, the federal, at, at some point, the federal organization that you would rather stay out of it the most is definitely getting into it. The Internal Revenue Service. They, they, the IRS told the NIL to hold my BER almost couldn't spell beer. Anyway, IRS says donations made to nonprofit NIL collectives are not tax exempt. So these collectives that have formed, including the one at Clemson, where they've tried to create an IPTAID like organization where they can just turn around and give the kids money. And then everybody realized, Hey, that's just pay to play. Right. And, and, and now they probably sold it. With them, with the idea that they could write it off. Correct, correct. Or the donors definitely could write it off. The kids could pop, probably, who knows what they told them. But now the IRS is saying, "Oh, uh, that's a negative, Ghost Rider. We, <laughs> you can't make a donation. Turn around and say the the quote from one, uh, one they didn't name this athletic director, but he says what I or she says what I tell my donors is." What charity are you donating to? You're not. You're lining kids' pockets to keep them at your school. That's not a charity. That's a way to get around tax laws, which leads to tax evasion and opens a whole different can of worms for donors. I'm blank sure glad we didn't do it. So there you go. Name, image, <laughs> and likeness okay. has turned into a big old mess. I, we're 28 minutes into our program, and I'm going to go on a brief little talk here <laughs> and I've said this before and I understand when kids go to play let's hypothetically speaking a Clemson football player it could be any school when you go to play football there you go to play football because you one you like pl to play football you're good at playing football and playing football at a high level is going to get you a scholarship worth about $150,000 then you're going to go eat at the football facility, okay? You're going to eat. The chef is going to prepare for you what you would like Yes. every time you go in there. You could drive a golf cart. You could drive a scooter. You could drive whatever. You can go out back and shoot basketball. You can go play putt-putt. You can play wiffle ball in the wiffle ball field. And those, that's fine. It's fine. But that's what – I know you make the university a lot of money. But you're getting a lot of money in benefits, Correct. I think. And, I mean, people will argue with me. I know they will. That's fine. I'm just saying from a – if you want to keep it truly amateur, 
then we got to figure this out where every bit of money that comes into a university is split equally among every athlete. Well, it goes back to, and like I said, we did a show on this. People can go if they want to hear the full hour of our opinions, but my impression of NIL, whether I agree with it or not, not even getting into that is name image likeness. Kids would get a cut of what the school was selling slash making that had their name image and likeness. And if that's some portion of the TV revenue, even then, then so be it. If they make it out on the field, they're like an actor, pay them a small percentage, whatever. But definitely if they're selling, you know, they're selling Trevor Lawrence jerseys for 80 bucks, you know, give Trevor $8 for every uh, Jersey that got sold. Or if they're on the cover of NCAA football, 2000, 2023, whatever. Yeah. But it definitely uh, did not stay at that level it definitely got out of hand and the bottom line is whether you like it or not uh, the government's involved and the irs is going to have some say so and and my just to make a prediction now as far as what's going to happen at this point i think folks at colleges like you said the sabins and you know other dabos and other big colleges of the world they're just going to find another way right or wrong or indifferent you know to to what looks, you know, legal, ethical, et cetera, to encourage a kid to come to their school is my prediction until somebody says, no, you can't do that. And they're going to reel it in a little bit more. So that's just my prediction. What, what, how do you think the colleges are going to handle this at this point? I think they're going to, there's going to be more oversight. There has to be a rule book. Has to be. There has to be a process. They, they put the whole, system in place before the process was in place because it's a brand new concept it's, it's, yeah. they put the cart before this is the epitome yeah. of putting the cart before the horse for sure right but so we, you they're making the rules up as they go and they're not they're not real good rules right so before the next recruiting cycle if they've got something in place that'll be fine and and at least for then that's what and that's fine really that's how you know you and i are in charge of programs and organizations you 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 try to you plan something, you go through with it. Ugh, that didn't work out so well. This could be better. That could be better. You tweak it. You do it again. Hopefully, it's better. And hopefully, you're looking to improve it every time. Uh, you hopefully. debrief after you have something. Correct. And you say the, what worked, what didn't work, what do we need to change, what do we need to keep. Bingo. Every yeah, every something brand new, something as big as this should be looked at annually, even if nobody thinks there's an issue with it for the, at least the next five, six, seven years. But you know what? You know who always benefits from his own name, image, and likeness? J-Doo. J-Doo. MC. MC, entertainer, entrepreneur. Go ahead. That's right. You read that. <laughs> I, I thought I hit the button. See, we're, we're, we're not. Uh, Pep we're, rallies, we're not corporate events, here. game shows, fundraisers, galas, et cetera. Just put that man on the mic and let him liven up any party. Anybody. Not only is Jay do a personal friend of James Dillard's, he has seen him work and I've seen him work and you and your organization would not be disappointed. If you add him to your function, you can find him at it's and on all forms of social media, social media at it's J Yep. Now. Thank you, sir. Now was, on to Bailey's favorite. Is, is this your favorite sport? Well, as I approach 50, yes. It is my favorite sport. Um, Speaking of drama. It's my favorite sport to play. Yeah. Very good. So this was big news this week. PGA Tour agrees to merge with Live. Okay. First of all. Those are the Roman numerals for 54. You know why? Very good, Steve. You know why? No, I don't. That's how many holes were played in a Live Golf Tour event. Oh. They only played three days versus four. Now, do you, you want me to continue with this? Well, well, first we got to show the fans how we went and did our research. We, okay. we both we both did some research. So knowing that there was drama going on, the fun fans, we there was a PGA event nearby, and we were lucky enough and blessed enough to be able to to visit the BMW Charity Pro Am Golf Tournament. And there's uh, me and Bailey in front of of uh, our future X7 maybe, and a couple of things of interest that we saw. Just if you're not from the South. If you can see that sign, the guy that's keeping the crowd quiet, the sign says "Hush, y'all." I thought that was I thought that was pretty neat. Doesn't say and, quiet, please. It says "Hush, y'all." <laughs> yeah, that's, that's and, one of the T markers. 
And it's T marker. Look at these T box markers. How cool is that? Little bitty X sevens. And if you don't know, every X series in the world is assembled here in Greer, South Carolina. And I have toured uh, the plant. You it's pretty cool. Fascinated with the T markers. I'm telling you, I, <laughs> I thought that was cool. So Bailey and I were extremely lucky and blessed to have well, a friend of Bailey's, Phil. We'll talk about Phil again in a minute. Hooked us up with some member passes. So we were in the member area. And there's a video of our view. So that was our view on the 18th approach as we were watching the BMW Pro-Am. And on-site research, we learned more about the thorn blade member these aren't really porta johns we'll call them mobile restrooms these are mobile restrooms okay I've, i didn't take a picture on the inside for obvious reasons thought about it but it literally was like a normal bathroom running water rolled right up to the tent there right outside the 18th green so and you're it, this is as nice as the one in my home if it's that they don't they don't do porta johns at Thornblade. So that was mobile that was extreme, mobile bathroom. So that's the extent of our our research. We didn't really get to the bottom of the the PGA and live golf tournament drama. So Bailey, what what tell us what we need to know about this. All right. So just for the people out there that don't know, uh, a couple years ago, a Saudi based conglomerate started a new golf tour with Greg Norman as their commissioner. And they offered um, millions of dollars to the top players in the world to join their tour. Well, the PGA tour said, Hey, if you join that, you can't play on, on the PGA tour anymore. So it's a long story. And, you know, the Phil Mickelson's, the Brooks Kepka's, the, Dustin Johnson, they went and played on this tour. They were guaranteed, guaranteed millions, hundred million dollars. No matter where they finish. Correct. Because they were they had appearance fees and they had these and and different players were given different amounts to sign with them. So um like NIL deals. <laughs> the Saudi Arabian Sovereign Wealth Fund is okay. a is a fund. The governor is this guy named Yasir Al Rumayan. Dog. That is worth currently. It's supposed to go higher in the next couple of years. Seven hundred billion dollars. All right. So they started scooping up all these players. And then the PGA tour was like, oh, Saudi Arabia treats people uh inhumanely. Uh we can't believe you guys are doing that. There were PGA tour professionals that said, I'm a PGA tour guy. I'm going to be loyal to the tour. I'm not going to take the money and run. All right. And on the live tour to get to wear shorts, there's a party atmosphere. It's this is that is whatever. It's a fun thing. And Jay Monahan's the PGA tour commissioner. And he has been outspoken against the live golf tour yet in the past couple months, he has been traveling around the world to go meet with Al Rumayan to organize a joining of forces with Live Golf. So basically a new company is forming where, yes, Jay Monahan is still the CEO, mm -hmm. but the governor of the board of directors is Al Rumayan. Okay, I'm going to call him Yasser. Yasser. So, the PGA Tour has been under all the scrutiny about being a monopoly. They, they get looked at by the federal government for antitrust violations because it is. It's just like the NFL years ago with the USFL. It's just like baseball has been sued for antitrust because there is no competition for mm -hmm. that league. Well, now they've created an even bigger conglomerate because they also brought in the DP World Tour, which is basically the European Tour. And so now, all these players that didn't leave and were loyal to the tour are going, we should have left. 
Should have left. But they're going, those ones that stayed are going to get equity and they're going to have equity in the new company. The ones that left will have to, they won't get any equity because they got their money up front. And right. then they will have to apply for reinstatement. And the same rules the PGA Tour put in place for those guys coming back will stay in place. So it's a, it's kind of a shady deal that went around like they met in Venice. They met in London. They, it's just kind of shady, but at the same time, it's financial because now the Saudi Arabian oil group will fund the PGA tour. So, and they'll be able like to raise the prices, raise the purse and, you know, and they'll get all the TV. I mean, if they're, if they're one organization, they'll get all the TV. They'll get all of everything. Yeah. Live golf was not making any revenue. All right. They didn't have to. They were on the WB. Right. The CW. C, sorry. Sorry. The yeah. C-dub. Yeah. Which is not even a, a network really. <laughs> um, and anyway, but golf, golf is amazing to watch. If you didn't watch it today, there's a reason it's amazing because Canadian Open this week ha hadn't been won by a Canadian since 1954. A guy named Nick Taylor goes out there. He plays a four-hole playoff, and he drains a 72-foot eagle putt to win, and the place goes nuts. They rushed the 18th green. It was classic, instant classic. Instant classic. Well, I do not disagree. On a, on a personal note, I played six holes for anybody that don't know my background. I've had back trouble a lot. The past four years have been extremely difficult, two surgeries, nerve damage, et cetera. And just to get out there and just to be out there, it's nice. It's, it's very therapeutic outdoors. The weather was great. And I just swung nice and easy, nice and easy, and really hit the ball better than, better than I used to. But uh, it was it's a great sport, and it's good to – I was – very, very blessed to be able to get back out there. Uh, like Brooke said, just what it wasn't me that was, I was blessed by the good Lord and the graces, uh, from after what my back's been through. But anyway, they need to get it together. So apparently they are and they might make some money. So golf fans get ready. Nothing like a little drama in the golf world. So it's time for our weekly giveaway from. Diamond Etch Products, where they have mastered a diamond laser engraving process, and they can put any design on items such as license plates, yard signs, tumblers, water bottles, and more. And for a high quality, forever lasting custom engraved product, check them out at diamondetchproducts.com or email my good friend Jalen Dillard, J A Y L I N, at diamondetchproducts.com. And you can get your official Fun Fans Podcast merchandise or they are also now an officially licensed partner with Clemson University. So get your official Clemson swag, that's James's word, swag, mine, from Diamond Edge Products. Looks good. Yeah, that's good stuff. We're, we're meeting with Diamond Edge tomorrow to, to figure out a, a streamlined way to get that out to folks, the fun fan folks and the Clemson fans. So it's also very is... durable because my koozie yesterday took a shot from an errant football at the pool and it bounced right back up. It was hey, good to go. Hey, these, these things are awesome. I've got tumblers and all kinds of stuff going on. So the giveaway this week, I mean, where's my drum roll? Let me get all my stuff. I've been doing fairly good. I'm not bragging on myself or nothing. So this week's fun fan goes to Mr. Phil Evett with team. team. Game on. Tell him, tell him why we love Phil Bailey. Well, I, I love I love Phil for different reasons. Um, I mean, he's he's one of the vendors I work with. He does great work with, uh, I mean, uniforms, t-shirts, uh, hats, banners, windscreen, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So uh, Phil does a great job, and his whole team at Team Game On does. But he also helped us uh, do our research at the BMW, the Corn Ferry Tour event, where famous celebrities like larry the cable guy were there yeah in Gri hey. griffey jr etc helped us with our research for his help we'll probably send him a, a a koozie and a tumbler so phil 
I've, I already have your address and I'll get you a koozie and a tumbler as soon as possible. How can you win? Just share any of our so, uh, shows on any social media and you'll be entered to win a koozie or a tumbler, some fun fans merch. Reach out to us and on how to participate in Wayne Buckingham's orange and white fundraiser and get to rub elbows with big time Clemson names. We appreciate all the updates that interview. I'm a, look, I try, I kind of do this at the end, but I'm just, I already think this is one of the best shows we've done. If you're listening to this show and you got people that hadn't listened, I share this show. I think it was a great show. The interview with Brooke was great. Uh, Bailey's, you know, insight on NIL and LIV and PGA and BMW and any other three letters. Is it insight on, or just, uh, it's insight. my opinions. We're going to, for these purposes, we're going to say it's insight. Is next next week? Is that uh, Father's Day? Next week is Father's Day. So, happy you know, early Father's Day, James. Happy early Father's Day to you, Bailey. And I'm sure we'll do something special for Father's Day next Sunday. So, don't miss that. Don't miss that one. And thanks for checking us out each and every week. Subscribe on your favorite platform, YouTube. Find us at thefanboys.com. All links mentioned will be on the fanboys, our fanboy site. And all of our shows are also embedded. In that site, we're going to continue to bring you stories of fun fans and plenty of great guests post posting shows each week. On behalf of the Fun Fans Podcast, J Thriller Entertainment, the Fanboys Fangirls Podcast Network, and Bailey Jackson. I'll have footage and pictures from Baltimore this week for next week's show. That's go awesome. go O's, go Tigers. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening and go Tigers.